Eh, nuestros chamanes nos han dicho que el petróleo es sangre de cuanjua. Entonces nosotros queremos cuidar a los cuancuas, por eso estamos contra las actividades petroleras. Eh, las empresas tran transnacionales pueden utilizar muchas, muchas cosas, pero eh, lo que tenemos que hacer es eh, demostrar lo, lo que somos y claro, decirle que, que no podemos dejar esto, que podemos hacer, pero la lucha tiene que ser conjuntamente, o sea, bien unidos, bien organizados. Porque siempre, a veces, ellos saben dividir a la gente, entonces sería bueno que ellos se concienticen primero, o sea, que se organicen primero, eh, porque la lucha tiene que ser unida. Entonces, de esa manera, una comunidad puede, puede hacer muchas cosas. Como por ejemplo, como nosotros hemos cerrado el pozo Duren 1, que una, que una nacionalidad o una comunidad nunca se puede cerrar un pozo petrolero. Entonces hemos logrado, pero hemos cerrado pacíficamente. Entonces yo les, yo les diría que sí podemos hacer cosas, pero en unidad. Foundation in the North Slope um, works with the teacher exchange program with Scotland and the North Slope schools and we also have the long conversation which helps empower people to keep talking about issues in their communities. I think the real problem is keeping them in school 14 plus making it relevant to their lives so yeah maybe the curriculum for excellence over here a similar fashion try and kind of carve a future for them based on the things they enjoy doing. My name is Elijah Williams and my Eskimo name is Umingmuk and the past three days we've been having Scottish teachers come out. They've been over here and we've been learning some stuff about Scotland and taking pictures with them and it's been great. I've had a lot of fun. My name is Kyan Hachark. I'm born and raised in Barrow, Alaska. I'm Inupiat Eskimo. I, I am a hunter and whaler. It is who I am as a person and it is who we are as a people. I was privileged enough to travel to Scotland and Wales uh, to experience and to learn their ways of uh, language revitalization. And we at, here in the North Slope wanted to learn and possibly take some ideas to help perpetuate and strengthen what we are going to do here at home. Um, Although we live in a modern day, uh, cell phones, uh, internet, it is very important for who we are as a people to maintain our traditional way of life. Um, I think when they see me out on the streets or visiting, they'll remember that they have a purpose and that they have the power to make a difference in the lives of people in our communities. And I think the more we empower them or encourage them that they have that power to make a difference in their community, they'll continue to encourage one another, not just the individuals that we've approached.
hear it quite a lot. Like, oh, that's okay that you're doing this and those shoes are just, oh no, I don't like them, they're so gay and that sort of thing. Um, it's quite a regular thing to hear. Um, but you just sort of get on with it and you keep your head down and you don't say anything to them. Whenever I was at school, I was already bullied anyway, so I wasn't even out. I didn't think it was worthwhile having something else to add to the last. But I think I would have found it easier to come out if there had been more discussion about it, particularly going to a Catholic school as well. It was hard enough even at sex education to get that, let alone anything to do with homosexual relationships or transgender or anything like that. There was just no awareness about it at all. Have more support in place. Make them feel more comfortable and that they're more secure. I've really enjoyed starting to go into the youth groups in Kilmarnock and Glasgow, so there is plenty of them. And there's lots of people like myself, which really makes it easier and it gives you someone to talk to. I think even just speaking about it and letting people know that it is a thing and that it is okay would be so much, it would make it so much better at school. We've already witnessed changes in the last few years in LGBT equality, but there is still room for improvement. More support. Wider acceptance. Be inclusive. More training for staff. More information. Challenge homophobia. the pollution suffered by the people of the Niger Delta, the, a group or a corporation was formed called MEND, Women for the Emancipation of Niger Delta. And at first it was just a peaceful demonstration to call the attention of the government to help them because all other sources of revenue for them were practically useless. Pollution of rivers and pollution of their land has rendered it useless and the people are suffering an abject poverty. It would surprise anyone to see the unemployment, to see the pollution, to see the poverty and backwardness these people live in. So youths have now resorted to the only form of employment they can find, um, which is militancy, kidnapping and theft. With the oil, the pollution of the oil, when the oil is not properly managed, it can cause pollution and damage to the society. It can also cause the society to have troubles like militancy. The issue of militancy arose as a result of the uh, indigents uprising against the government because the government failed to provide the necessary revenues to power these communities. So they turned to militancy, vandalizing of oil pipelines as a form of protest against the government's decisions and policies. Well, here in Port Harcourt, some predominant oil companies, we have Shell, we have Agip, we have Elf. Like these three majorly dominate the whole place. Oil in Nigeria has both positive and negative effects. Some of the positive effects include civilization and technological advancement. And there are also negative effects of this oil. For example, it causes pollution. Personally, I think petroleum has done our country more harm than good. For instance, the problem of monopolization by the oil sector. Before the advent of oil, our country depended on the agricultural sector, which accounted for up to 85% of the working population and up to 80% of our foreign exchange. But now, since the discovery of oil, all efforts to develop the country have been put into the oil sector, which is fuel, now fueling all the other sectors of the economy. The agricultural sector has now retrogressed and practically become dead, as people see agriculture as being akin to abject poverty.